The enemy deserves no mercy, Daniel. Uh, am I missing something? Oh. Ha! Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Tonight, I'm taking a look at the McFarlane Toys Fortnite Skull Trooper. Now, during the course of a week, I like to change things up. I don't like to repeat properties. It kind of, you know, just for a little bit more variety. Plus, it makes it more fun to open toys. But I'll be damned if the cuddle team leader from earlier in the week didn't impress me so much that I had to hunt down the Skull Trooper. Now, that's for two reasons. I wanted to see how McFarlane Toys handled the male figure from this line. And two, I wanted to see if it was a fluke that I actually didn't break something on Cuddle Team Leader. Because it's been my experience in the past couple years that McFarlane Toys, at least when I open them, I, get, I, I have something break off. Looking at the package, it's just like the Cuddle Team Leader, except in blue. It's a little bit plain with just the logo and the name and the plain yellow background, but really, cardboard, get out of here, give me toy. On the side, a promotional picture of Skull Trooper, Fortnite, Epic Games. On the back, the rest of the series, uh, series two down here, the role play items. Yeah, just, hey, buy more stuff that's what the back is for on the side a bigger promotional shot of skull trooper on the top same thing on the bottom price tag legalese it's telling you that the figure may not look exactly like the prototype did I, i'm covering their ass for whatever reason this figure doesn't look or move like i thought it would in the promotional pictures i want my money back plus i'm suing mcfarland toys for a million dollars but i'm gonna get this open and see if it's half as good as the cuddle team leader and if it is I'm, I'm damn happy. And there we go, all out of the package. And while it's not as fluid or visually interesting as Cuddle Team Leader, I have to say, oh, 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 you know what that means. Looking at the sculpt, if you take away the white, you take away the black, basically it's a guy in tactical gear. Sure, there's some elaborate armor pieces and some straps and some pouches, but otherwise, yeah, if you painted this in greens or camo, it, it looked like a dude in fatigues. There's an oddball pouch right here on his abdomen. He's got a couple of belts on. The one thing that takes away from that just badass tactical look is this patch sewn in looking kind of cartoonish. As cartoonish as a guy in a skeleton costume. Shin guards, I like how this one, it has the straps attached correctly. This one's like, oh no, I messed something up. I just need to wrap it on there. Heavy, heavy boot guard armor right there. But behind that, you can see that they sculpted laces in there. Elastic band at the wrist. This, whatever this is, I'm sure it pertains to the game somehow. Bandana wrapped around the bicep with the dangles sticking out the back right there. What's cool are the dog tags. I, well, at least I think these are dog tags kind of hanging below the bandana around his neck. Those and I think the bandana are a separate piece just glued down, but it totally works. It feels like... It's part of the overall sculpt, but it's its own individual little piece. And then as far as paint goes, it's just black with a skeleton tampoed over it. At first I thought, oh, there's some mucky muck, some white randomly inserted in places, maybe mess ups, but I kind of think it's intentional. It looks like it's kind of just swiped across here. But really, if it was messed up a little bit, I would chalk it up to, you know, a guy with a stencil painting a skeleton costume on. Getting up to the head, this may be a little bit more pink than I've seen in promotional shots, but you do see a pink tint to it, so I'm not going to grab too much about it. The teeth, the eyes, the nose are punched in really well. The sculpt, I feel like it's not as realistic as my brain wants it to be, but it matches the game art pretty well. It's just a straight line across for the mouth. I don't think there are any eyelids or anything peeking under there. I think it's just eyes painted onto a blank surface, but that's not a bad thing. That works. Got the hoodie coming up. Got a line running down the middle. Pretty basic compared to the sculpt of the rest of the body. Now, as far as gripes go, to get the range of motion that they wanted in the mid-abs, I feel like it's gappier than what we saw with the first figure. But you get great range, so it's a trade-off right there. And then, because of the design of the bandana, head movement, nice up, nice tilt and such, but not really down, so you lose some poses here and there. The shoulders, are, for some reason, are hindered, and I can't figure out why, because you try to go back and forth, and it kind of locks into a position, but if you bring the arm out just barely, it shifts up. But over here, I get locked out of forward position until I move it a little bit, 
and then I can kind of force it up there. I don't know if there's something inside the shoulders hindering, why it's different shoulder to shoulder, I, I couldn't tell you. I said I was griping, but it's stuff you can work around. It's not super negative against the figure. Like here, the hips, they look almost seamless. You would think, oh, you don't get any range of motion out of there. Gotta kind of work at it get it in there because it tries to catch whenever you just pull out. If you take it, shove in a little bit, you can get the hip up. But you can see where I'm wearing across the top of the line right there. It's becoming white, but it looks so damn good in neutral position. Hell, even in spread position, it looks good. Going over articulation, there is a dumbbell joint going down into the top of the neck and then up into the bottom of the head and then there's a ball joint at the bottom of the neck so all together you do get a great range of motion it's just the bandana getting in the way right there i wish you, it was flexible or something there's a dumbbell in the shoulder with a shoulder cap hiding that articulation so you can get forward you can get back you can get down and then like i said to get up you got to kind of force it out there's a hinge at the shoulder at the end of that goes up to there swivels around swivel at the bicep double elbow and look again even on the male figure comes all the way up swivel hinge swivel at the wrist you can get it going up and down there's swivel and then if you take it turn it come around you can get side to side out of it ball joint in the mid torso and ball joint at the bottom but this time around there's more movement mid torso less movement at the waist you can crunch you can arc back tilt tilt there's a swivel coming out to a hinge in the hip like we talked about uh, it looks really nice in neutral position you got to kind of work it come out you get out to about right there forward kind of crashes between crotch and leg back a little bit of swivel hidden up in there at the joint but it runs into itself and you can see right there the paint is rubbing a little bit from where i brought it up like that double knee comes all the way around the shoulder the shoulder pad the shin guard sticks out a little bit whenever you articulate the leg, but it makes sense. It's a shin guard, not a knee guard. Hinge at the ankle goes back, goes forward. With Skull Trooper, we do get forward facing him a little bit, so you get rocker. It's not quite forward, but it's angled a little bit. And then toe joint comes all the way up. For accessories, he comes with the epic bolt action sniper rifle, and it's very undetailed. It's blocky, it's blotchy, but I think this is what it looks like in the game. It fits the aesthetic of the overall line. Now, once again, they gave the left hand and the trigger finger from what i've read in the comment section most of the players are right-handed I, I don't know if you can switch in the game or what but i'm okay with it if it comes down to it you can pose it in the right hand too and even though that looks funky and it is thick i wish these were a little bit thinner just to make it easier to put in the hands but the hands do flex out you can put the grip in there and it's not bad at all i do have this beige paint kind of rubbing off onto the black of the figure but it wipes right off. I'm just afraid it's going to start looking really rough on the gun. He comes with precision back bling. And I really like the details to this. It looks like there's a tool hanging off the back of it. It's got a walkie-talkie that seems like a separate piece, but it's glued on there. It's not coming off. Pouches, webbing, detail. For the most part, it's just cast in black with a little bit of color, but it still looks nice overall. Now, the peg on this one seems fairly straight. It doesn't have any uh, kind of taper to it. It's much easier to put in his back than it was with Cuddle T leader in fact because they advertise these as interchangeable if you try to take this one there is taper to it it is very hard to put in there and since i've had that other back bling in this figure the whole time waiting for this review if you take skull troopers it, it's loose in there so it's not quite i it's gonna need some tightening up or something there you go. And that makes me not want to leave this in for any amount of time for fear of loosening that hole up so this won't fit in there. Oh, little squeaking. It stays in there. And then finally he comes with the Death Valley pickaxe. I like this. It looks just like a skull nailed to the top of a pickaxe. But the handle for that pickaxe is a bone with some wrappings on it. It's a neat little design. I'm getting the same thing. You can see the paint kind of chipping off as many times as I've put it in his hand. But just putting it in there, not bad at all. For size, Skull Trooper stands a little bit under seven inches tall. Here he is with Cuddle Team Leader, and at first you think, oh, Cuddle, what, why is she taller than him? But if you look at the shoulders, she's actually shorter. It's just the size of her big bobblehead. Here he is with Marvel Legends Iron Fist and movie Thor. This is a larger scale. It's not going to work with your standard Marvel Legends, unless you make him an Asgardian. And again, nothing wrong with that. But the figure is definitely seven inch scale. Here he is with the NECA Robocop and the Predator Dutch. And then, as always, here he is with Gun 
us. I'll tell you what, Halloween comes earlier every year. Here you go, son. Golly gee, thanks a lot, mister. So at the end of the day, another home run from McFarland Toys. They've gotten me to like, uh, they've gotten me to love a property I did not care about at all. After Cuddle Team Leader and checking online availability at the store, it showed my local GameStop as having one. Uh, I, I checked it at like 2 o'clock in the morning, so the next morning I was sitting outside of GameStop waiting for them to open to buy a toy. I have not done that in a while. But it begs the question, why do this now? Why pack one of their action figures with, well, a line of their action figures with this much articulation? Did Epic Games say, oh, we want it in this scale, we want this amount of articulation, we want this level of QC? Whereas the owners of the IP for Walking Dead say, hey, we want a smaller scale, we want less articulation, or we want your smaller scale raised up to a bigger scale and take away most of that articulation. Is it that much different license to license? Because really, if McFarland Toys had started this 20 years ago, at this point they would have, you know, been probably doing Marvel and probably DC and there would be theme parks dedicated to Todd McFarlane. It's a spawn world after all. And then aliens would reveal themselves to us and we could take these toys and give them to them and they would be like, hey, come join our universal society because we can see just from this that your technology has finally advanced enough to join us. And there would be global or if not universal peace. Just think of where we would be. Just think about it. Damn it, Todd, this is all your fault. <sighs> Okay. But really, if McFarlane had been doing this all along, I would have a shitload more McFarlane toys. This is just beautiful. The sculpt, the paint, the articulation. This surpasses a lot of my super articulated lines that I collect religiously. But as far as this line goes, I'm down. I can't wait for the Black Knight. I can't wait for Raptor. And then Series 2, Beyond, make as many as you want, Todd. I will buy them all. So if you like the review, comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you on that whoosh.